Deputy President William Ruto says the curriculum reform being undertaken is expected to see loopholes during the taking of national examinations. Speaking during the opening of a curriculum review forum at the KICC, the Deputy President encouraged the participants to explore international best practices to ensure they come up with watertight proposals. His sentiments come at a time when radical reforms at the Kenya National Examination Council have been undertaken following the cancellation of the KCSE results of 5,000 candidates as a result of cheating. His sentiments were echoed by Education Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi, who said the draft design of a new curriculum will be ready in the next two months. A section of the civil society has however cautioned that any changes to the curriculum should be systematic and not simply operational or nothing will be solved by a change of curriculum. I'm sure many of you are aware that we are a youth-heavy country. The majority of our population is young and we are reproducing by about a million people every year. You need to factor in the child that was born yesterday. By the time they walk into the classroom in a few years, will we have the relevant content for them or will we hand them down the same thing we taught their parents about 40 years ago? The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission says 52 million shillings recovered from chicken get scandal will be spent on ambulances, Commission CEO Halake Wako told the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee on Wednesday that it will be the first ever undertaking of its kind where proceeds of corruption were recovered from offshore accounts and reinvested locally. The funds have been recovered from a London-based security printer convicted of bribing Kenyan election and examination officials in order to secure tenders. Wako also told the House team that the Commission has received communication from Jersey authorities that they have opened proceedings to repatriate 525 million shillings from former Kenya Power Managing Director Samuel Gishoro and former Energy Minister Chris Okemo are accused of stealing and hiding in the UK island more than 10 years ago. The government has issued a 21-day amnesty for the surrender of ivory and any wildlife trophies held without a permit issued by the Kenya Wildlife Service. Environment Cabinet Secretary Judy Wakungu says those who do so within the given time frame will not be prosecuted. Wakungu says the amnesty is part of preparations for the touching of the largest ivory stockpile in the world set for April 30th in Nairobi. The minister, who spoke at a news conference to update Kenyans on preparations of the event, says 105 tons of ivory and 1.3 tons of rhino horns will be set ablaze by President Uhuru Kenyatta in the presence of at least 10 heads of state and international celebrities, including Hollywood stars. The tribunal charged with investigating Supreme Court Justice Philip Tunoi will hold a status conference on Thursday. Tribunal Chair Sharad Rao has told Capital Newsbeat that the conference is designed to set out the modus operandi of its hearings scheduled to begin on Monday next week. It is at the status conference that Tunoi will make known his feelings about whether or not the tribunal's hearings should be made public or held behind closed doors. The procedure for collecting evidence will also be laid out. The Rao Chad Tribunal is tasked with determining if there is truth to the allegations that Tunoi took 200 million shillings bribe from Nairobi Governor Ivan Skidero in exchange for the upholding of his electoral victory.